Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And just to answer your question quickly, um, you know, perhaps if we didn't let people in and out of prison, lower felonies to misdemeanors, and generally not obey the rule of law, we'd have a lot less gun violence. Um, the issue with gun violence is that we want to do something to make, obviously, our country safer, but we also don't want to harm those who are legal gun owners who abide by the law and do no harm. Our answers always seem to be, in this body, in this Congress, that we go after the decent law-abiding citizens, but those that have illegal guns, who steal guns, who commit crimes, we're not worried about that anymore. So that's my sense of that, that issue. But I wanted to go on. Uh, would the gentleman please, yield for a question? I just, I can't on this, and I'm sorry. I would like to, if God, if they gave us a little longer. So I apologize. But yes, sir. So there's a few questions I wanted to <clears throat> ask. <clears throat> I've been doing a lot of talking already, so I'm going to try my best with your name. Miss Durakalu? Okay, thank you. And thank you for being here. You know, I have to admit, it was only recently that the State Department's Global Engagement Center came to my attention. I've been in government a long time, 25 years, and I've been here in Congress for five years. Yet it seems every day <clears throat> I am still learning of yet another office in our government tasked with the responsibility of censoring Americans on social media, all under the guise of national security. So quickly, can you please answer the following for me? What, and, it, and I'm sorry that it has to be quick. Again, I would have loved to have taken his question. I, love, I would love if we had more time, but this is a system we have for good reason. Otherwise, we'd be here for 10 hours. Can you please answer the following? What is the purpose of the Global Engagement Center, if not an instrument at times for censoring free speech the administration doesn't like? And I need you to do it quickly because I have a few other questions. Sir, the Global Engagement Center does not engage in the domestic information space whatsoever, and they do not censor information or engage in content moderation. What they do is they analyze, identify, and expose foreign propaganda. What authority is the GEC using to determine what constitutes the truth, the truth on social media? The GEC was congressionally mandated by a bipartisan bill in 2016, so I would refer to that bill. Okay, but do you know the authority, or are you just going to simply say they, it was congressionally? They actually around? do not engage uh, in the domestic information space whatsoever. Not at all? No. What is the budget of the GEC, and how many people are working on this? Um, so I know there are approximately 100 employees in GEC, but in terms of its budget, I would have to refer you to the GEC itself, and they're more than happy to brief any member of this committee. Okay, so you don't know any idea of the actual budget? I don't know their budget, no. Yes or no? Is the State Department operating any other similar offices whose goal is to censor speech deemed as untruthful or simply unpopular? No. <clears throat> I have to give it to you. I very seldom get a direct answer from anybody. Well, I am a fellow Rutgers alum, sir, so uh, okay. maybe it has something <laughs> to do with it. Yeah, so when you're in Jersey, you're tough and you're straightforward. <laughs> the current administration's relentless encroachment on our First Amendment rights is deeply concerning to me. It is especially unnerving considering that the present head of the department, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, orchestrated the intelligence community letter that was used to undermine the Hunter Biden laptop story, leading to censorship of the New York Post story on this matter. So there is a concerning pattern of suppressing speech coming from the leadership of this administration. Maybe it's not you, but Anthony Blinken has a lot to answer for. And it seems evident that nearly every agency from the State Department to the HHS and the DOG is embroiled in efforts in some way to suppress free speech on nearly every topic. And this effort extends to external groups like the Alliance for Securing Democracy, the Atlanta Council, the Global Disinformation Index, the Institute for Strategic Dialogue, and I assume countless others that I probably don't even know. Given the government's overwhelming involvement in looking into America's conversations, it is crucial that this committee rigorously exercise its oversight role and its responsibility. Because I find it very hard to believe that these actions haven't also ensnared a considerable number of innocent Americans. 
That's why on April 18th, the committee submitted a letter to Secretary Blinken requesting documents and information relating to the department's possible coercion and collusion with companies and other intermediaries to stifle free speech. We're still waiting. We're still waiting for a response to that request. Yes or no? Can you provide an estimate for when the committee can expect to receive these documents? If nothing's wrong, if everything's good, if everything's right, we should want to turn them all over. Sir, we actually did respond and we've provided four productions that equals nearly 1,200 pages, but it's on a rolling basis and we expect to provide more. My understanding there is much, much more that we didn't receive. And we'd love an accurate accounting of that because that's also Congress's job and responsibility. And I say yes or no, can the State Department guarantee the delivery of an unredacted documents as per our request by August 1st? Uh, sir, we provide everything, and some of that includes redactions, but we're happy to work with your staff on an accommodations process on those redactions. I, I hope you will, and yeah. I hope you really mean that, and I hope it's only redacted when it's matters of national security. It's been this committee's experience that constantly areas are redacted, in, or not, not just with, with you folks, but in general, that just don't know to need to be, and it's not national security. So I hope you will. Congressman, can I respond to that? Yes. I personally reviewed the four tranches that we provided to this committee, and I could say the vast majority is not redacted, and when it is, it's due to personnel information, privacy, and some of the implementers of the Global Engagement Center have faced threats from foreign actors, and that's the reason why their redactions are there. And I appreciate that. Now, just to close up, there's so many different departments, so many different agencies, so many people looking into, for lack of a term, personal stuff and personal freedoms. The most important freedom, more than security, is to have freedom. It, freedom is more important than security. If we give up our freedom in America, we've given up everything. And I fiercely believe that, and I thank you. I yield back. Thank the gentleman. Um, I want to thank our witnesses. I'm going to take my five minutes. The CDC has a central role in setting COVID-19 